Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing a palettes collection part two. Um, yeah, because I didn't want to do it all in one video because I have quite a few palettes and I just wanted to split it up in two videos. So if you haven't watched the first one, I will, um, I mean, I don't know if I can link it right now because I'm pre-filming and pre-posting this. So just go back and you'll see that part one is before this one. Um, part two, this is more of my bigger palettes that I, um, I may not use as frequent, especially when I'm traveling, but I still use them, um, from time to time. So, um, please stay tuned and, uh, we will get started. So the first thing I'm going to, I'm going to share with you is my Urban Decay Naked One palette. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, this palette is being discontinued. Um, I think it's coming out reversionized in one way or another. I can't remember. This is a tried and true, very neutralized palette. I love to use this on days where I have an event, don't know what the hell I want to do with my look. And, you know, I just gravitate towards my naked one because it is a, a warmer tone palette. Um, the only problem I have with this palette is that there's only two matte shades. So Naked and Buck are the only two matte shades. And then the rest are like shimmery satin finishes, which I'm kind of like, what the F? Because then you're constantly using these two, they get used up first before anything else, and then the palette, you can't really use it all by itself. So I feel like once I use up these two mattes, this palette will become irrelevant to me because then I'm going to have to dip into another transition shade in order to complete a look with this. So, I mean, keep that in mind if you're in the market to buy a palette. You know, this one is uh, is definitely one of the, G, the OG of palettes, but functionality-wise... You know, there's only two matte shadows, the rest are shimmer, and matte shadows are very crucial, especially when you are, um, you know, blending in the crease. So I wouldn't say with all the palettes in the market that this is like a best choice, but back in the day when I purchased this, at the time, this was like the whole phenomenon. Um, I have used this, uh, I have used it on myself, have used it on my nieces for, you know, prom, semi-formal, that kind of stuff. Um, would I repurchase this palette again? First of all, it's not going to be available. And second of all, no, out of my own choice, because I find that all the other palettes that I own that are more recent have more matte options, which is amazing. Um, the colors in here are really nice. Half-baked, I own a single shadow of, and that's probably one of my favorite shadows in this palette. So even when this palette starts to come down in um, in shadow options, I still have half-baked as a as a, a single shadow that I can use with other palettes, which is awesome. I mean, the rest are nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, the rest of the shadows are beautiful. Here's Half Baked, if you haven't seen it before. Like, look at that gold. Um, here's Sidecar. It's like a taupey. Um, here's Toasted. This is more like a bronze. See how, like, beautiful the shimmers are? They're really buttery and creamy. Um, they're easy to, to blend with. Um, see if I can do virgin. Virgin is more of like a satiny, what's that awful swatch? Virgin is like a satiny shimmer finish, kind of more satin than shimmer, but anyways. And then if you add Fix Plus to this, they get more amplified. So the quality is really good. It's just for me, I wouldn't gravitate toward this, this as much as I used to only because I do have you know, more options with the, the, uh, crease shades. Uh, I feel like crease shades are very critical when you're doing an, uh, a fancy eye look. And when you don't have those options, they can, it can become a little tough having to just use one palette. And a lot of the time people don't have time to dip into five different palettes just to make uh, a look, you know? So, um, naked, the naked one is, um, kind of nostalgic for me in a way, cause it was one of the first palettes I ever purchased from Sephora. Um, I don't, I don't think it's, economically the best in the sense of you know how many matte shades opposed to how many shimmer shades but um, if you're looking for something that is more on the neutral warm tone side and you don't mind the shimmers uh, the shadow quality is fantastic I have not had a problem with Urban Decay Naked shadows before so um, that is a, a nice one that I will hold on to as long as I can um, and as long as I can still use it the second one is the Urban Decay Naked 2. This is kind of the same lines as the Naked 1, only it's a more cooler toned palette. Again, with this one, the same idea. There's only two, if I'm not mistaken, there's only two matte shades. Yes. And that is Booty Call and Tease. Which, I mean, 
two matte shades with a list of shimmers is kind of like what the hell so i mean half baked is in here again you got half baked in here as well um you've got chop you've got chopper which is a more coppery color you've got snake bite which is really nice i don't know if snake bite is in the naked let me just check no it's not um you got suspect which is more of a taupe pistol which is more of like a gray cool toned verve is another cool um ydk another coolie taupey shade and then your your blackout and your busted which is more of like a purpley shade color again these shadows are very pigmented i'm going to swatch what did i swatch here i swatched chopper it covered the uh it covered the name i couldn't even read it so here's chopper uh half baked is in here again which you know i've already swatched it but i'll do it again very pigmented um here i'll do ydk do i have any more spots see so the the shadow qualities are nice they're definitely pigmented they're very vibrant you get a beautiful mirror um you know i i just find that the lack of mattes are an issue for me with the naked um the urban decay naked uh palettes and you know I, I i love the shades like don't get me wrong the shadows are beautiful but if i wanted more of a matte a matte ish uh eye i would not most likely use this i would use this more if i'm doing a very glam shimmery look so personally for me i feel like these two um palettes are not gravitated to mature skin because mature skin um the, sh the shimmers will accentuate your fine lines very very highly um, so I think these are more gravitate towards teenagers, uh, in, between your teenage and your early, and your twenties. Um, once you hit 30, it's a little harder to pull these off. I still use them and I'm 31, but I'm noticing as I'm getting older and my fine lines are coming in, it's a lot harder to use these on mature skin. So I use these more on my nieces. They are 18 and 15 and you know, they look better on them than they do on me as I age. So I think these are made gravitate towards more for younger younger people um so those are the two urban decay one and twos now i have another urban decay naked um this is the naked heat palette which is something that i was debating on picking up when it first came out because i wasn't sure on if they were going to be enough matte shadows but lo and behold this is what the naked heat looks like and there is more matte shadows than shimmer which is amazing so i have here one two three four, five, six, I have seven matte shadows in this palette and I have one, two, three, four, five shimmer shadows, seven mattes, five shimmers. Oh, this is one of my favorite warm tone palettes because you have more of an option and they're just as pigmented. Um, I'm going to swatch a couple here for you. So this is lumber. Do you see that? very shimmery um i'm actually a little bit more tanned right now because i'm i'm filming this before i go on vacation and i did get a little bit of a base going so um I, I my skin is a bit darker at the moment here's dirty talk and then um here's scorched like these are freaking pigmented you know those are the shimmers um i can show you let me see if I can. The mattes are actually um, very much just as pigmented. Uh, they're very easy to blend. See that? Uh, let's see what Fuego. On Fuego. On Fuego. Uh, these are really pigmented, but they're easy to blend, and I love that. So. You know, the Naked Heat Palette, if I had to recommend one Naked Palette by Urban Decay, it'll be the Heat one. I know it's warm toned. A lot of people, there's people who like warm tones, there's people who don't like warm tones. I get it. But for me, I'm a warm tone girl. I'm, I'm an olive skin complexion with an olive undertone. Um, warm tones just gravitate more towards me. And, and out of all three palettes, this one is the one that I would say is worth the what? Almost $70 because these palettes are freaking expensive. Um, so yes, love this. Would I travel with it? No only because they're very soft and if your luggage gets banged around they could potentially break so no i would not travel with these in case anyone is wondering um and you know what that's a pretty good question for you guys to you know ask me because um certain people 
uh, want a certain palette for different reasons, for different occasions, that kind of thing. Um, okay, so my next uh, palettes are... This is the Lorac Pro 1. So you guys have heard, I'm sure, plenty of times. So this has got the top row is mattes, the bottom row is shimmers. Fantastic setup. Love this palette. I don't know if they still have this available, but let me tell you. The shadows are so creamy. They are so blendable. You can do a daytime, nighttime look. You know, you can't go wrong with this. I actually, I haven't used this palette in a while, and I think I'm going to pull this out. Which brings me to my Lorac Pro 2, which is the, um, the Pro 2, which is the more cooler toned um, bucket of shadows. As you can see, uh, top row mattes. The bottom row is more of a shimmer. I have used this as well um, quite a quite a bit, more, more the mattes than the shimmers. But let me just tell you guys, if you had these two palettes together, you're pretty much set for any neutral type of eye, warm tone and cool tone, because it's got everything you need here. Um, traveling with these, I would not travel with these on a plane. Uh, but I would travel with them on a, a weekend away as like a road trip. These are good to travel with as a road trip because it's got everything you need in one palette for your eye look. Um, but no, I would not travel with these on a plane because again, the shadows are very soft. So if they get banged around, they can break. And you know what? These are not, these are just similar in the sense of the Urban Decay. They're very, they're very soft. So they're easily breakable and they're expensive. So love the Pro 1 and Pro 2. Um, would travel on a road trip, not on a plane. And then we have my Kat Von D uh eye contour palette which is now in a tin version where you can uh remove the trays and replace the trays as you finish them which i think is a great great idea this is also an all matte palette so you have each quadrant is an eye look or you can just mix up your eye look whatever however you want so i'm gonna i'm gonna swatch some of these for you like look the pigmentation i'll even do the black Uh, let's do the brown. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. They're all matte, which is what I like because there's sometimes I don't feel like shimmer on my eyelids. The older you get, the more you become um, pickier with the looks you do, especially because if it's not really a fancy event and you're not looking to pop out, um, sometimes you're just looking for an average um matte shadow look and this is what will give it to you if you're not a shimmery person at all and you like all mattes this is another good palette for you um they have them now in the tin form this is the hard cardboard packaging when it first came out but um the tin form is now what they use but i still you know i still love this would i carry it with me on a plane no um they're very soft and buttery so they are prone to break so i would not travel with this um i would travel by car not by plane just saying um, okay, let's see what other what other things do I have to show you? Okay, so here we go um, I have my Kylie cosmetics Kylie peach palette. This one came out what, a couple years ago I this is probably the only palette I ever bought from her and I was I was pretty disappointed because I find that her shadows are hard to blend and I find that her shadows unless you have a good base underneath are not as pigmented um, They look pigmented when you swatch them But they're not all that pigmented when you apply them to the skin without a good base like look at that blue i mean it's okay but i want pigmentation and that's not what i get out of this palette the peach palette is very subtle um I don't know. I was really disappointed with this palette. I didn't get it rid of it because it was hella expensive, especially to ship to Canada. Uh, so I haven't, you know, I've held on to it. The shimmers are not very, sh they're not very shimmery. Um, like when you swatch it, it looks shimmery on the finger. And, but when you actually use a brush, it doesn't look the same. Okay. It's very... I don't know. It, it smells weird. I have no idea. I just, it's got this weird, weird scent to it. I'm not a fan of the peach palette. I don't know if Kylie still carries this, but it's not worth it. You got a brush with it too. It just wasn't, um, it wasn't a favorite of mine. And, uh, I mean, I'll use it from time to time in the spring just to do a very light look, but if you want something more on the vibrant side, this is not, this is a thumbs down. Um, okay, so I have a couple of Z palettes that I created myself that have mixtures of, um, MAC shadows and 
and uh, Makeup Geek Shadows. I mean, I can go through one by one, but I'm not going to, you know, bore you guys with it all. I'm more of a neutral person, so you can tell a lot of these are neutral for me. I have mixed shimmers and mattes in here. This is the first palette. Then I have the second palette, which I actually pulled some shadows out because I, I, um... I use them for when I go away on vacation. Um, so like you see, there's some, there's some actually panned already or have hit pan. And then I have some darker shadows here as well. Um, but these are a mix of Makeup Geek and of MAC. Uh, and then I have, I have another batch here. Uh, these two are Sephora. I think these three, these three, I don't know what these are from. Let me check. Uh, Stila. These three are Stila. So these three are Stila up here. Sorry, guys. This is a eyeshadow from MAC. And I believe this is also an eyeshadow. Oh, no, this is another Stila one. Coco. So, again, more neutrals. What else is new? I'm a neutral girl. Um, and then I have um, a loose one with all of my colorful... I don't know if this will fall, so bear with me, because I don't have magnets on here. These are with colorful eyeshadows. Um, a lot of these are MAC, actually. I think one's Makeup Geek, I think. Yeah, Poolside is Makeup Geek, and then the rest are MAC. Sunset B. I don't know if... This was a blush, which... I don't, I haven't used in a while. It was like a peachy-ish blush. Yeah, so those like I use from time to time. If I'm not, if I don't have something in a palette that I know I'm looking for, I can find it in one of my single shadows that I have in my Z palettes. Um, do I travel with my Z palette? Um, not as often. What I like to do is I have a quadrant and I put four shadows from in here into my quadrant and I, I travel with the quadrant instead just because the Z palette is quite large. Um, now, moving on to Tartiste Pro. This is uh, a great concept for a palette. I really do um, love this palette. So you have all shimmer, sorry, all shimmer shadows on this row here. Then you have all matte shadows in these four rows, which is amazing because you can either do a matte look or you can even do it with a pop of shimmer. You have the options here. Beautiful palette, $70. I think it's worth it. Um, I feel like their matte shadows by Tarte are really good. I mean, I love the Tartist, uh, or I love the Tartlet palettes. So when I picked this up, I was just, um, you know, flabbergasted. Um, the colors are beautiful. You have some warm tones in there. I think more of a warm tone palette, but you can get away with uh, a little bit of a cool look if you mix and match certain uh, shades. Um, I'd say about, I, I would say about maybe one row or one column is, is more on the cooler side, but it is beautiful. I do love this palette. I don't use it nearly as enough as I should, um, but there, I've used this more in and around um, a look that if I want to do either a full out matte look or if I want to add a pop of shimmer, I've used this a couple times and I have enjoyed it. The shadows are great quality. Uh, the matte is a little bit hard to blend, uh, not too hard, but you know, because they're a harder shadow. Their matte, um, their mattes are a little bit more harder, um, not as soft, but they're pigmented. They're very pigmented. I'm just going to show you guys what they look like here. Here's like a nude. So they're beautiful. It's just, um, because they're a harder shadow, they're more compressed. Um, it is a bit more effort to blend, which I don't mind, to be honest. I don't mind. If I know I have the time, I will definitely, um, use the palette because I know that like the, the pigmentation is there. It's just the blendability you have to work with a little bit more. And then uh, let me show you the shimmers. So here is shimmer number one. Can you see that? My lighting sucks guys. Sorry. Here, let me do it this way. Shimmer number two. So there was, uh, the first one was Ethereal, the second one was Glam, the third one is Minx, and the fourth one is Trendy, which is like a emeraldy green. So they are pigmented. It's kind of got like a two-tone, that emeraldy green one. It's like a two-tone shade. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Um, 
I don't know. I just, uh, I like this one, but I'm not like in love with it. It's still great to use. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I don't use it as often as I use others. So just keep that in mind. Uh, again, it's up to you. What are your needs in a palette? What would you be using more often? Uh, that kind of thing. Um, so that one is a really pretty palette. I just, I need to use it more. That's the thing. Okay, moving on. So I have two Morphe palettes here that are on the neutral side. This is the 25B and this is the 25A. Um, they honestly look very similar. I honestly... When I saw these, I was like online, I was like, oh my God, like these are amazing. Um, they're a much harder uh, shadow, very hard. Uh, they are pigmented. They are pigmented. Um, but I find that these are really hard to blend. I'm not gonna lie. Can you guys see that? They're really hard to blend. And um, the shimmers are not as buttery as I'd like them to be. I feel like it takes a little bit more work to work with the shimmers and I have to use a fix plus to amp it up a little bit. Um, and then here is this one here. This is the 25B. This is more of like a cooler tone, whereas this is more of a warmer tone. Um, more of the, I think this is more fall and I would go with this is more, you could use them both in fall, but I would use this one more in fall for the red. The red is very pretty. So like, see how like nicely pigmented they are? The shimmers, though, I just find need a little work. I mean, the shimmer looks great when you swatch it with your finger. It's when you use a brush, that's when there's an issue. I cannot get the pig same pigmentation with a brush that I can with my finger for these shadows. And I, I was disappointed because I really did enjoy Mor Morphe. I do enjoy some Mor Morphe products, just these ones were not it for me. Um, I just, I don't even, I barely use these to be honest because I feel like I have to fight with them so much. So these kind of get placed in the back of my collection. They're still nice and they're great for beginners, especially because they're more on the affordable side. So if you're a beginner and you want something to select from, these are great options. But for me, because I've tried better quality shadows, I know that I can get a, a really great look and an easy look. It's hard for me to get to these because, and it's weird because some other Morphe palettes that I'm going to show you are better quality than these. And I just don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, here's the Jaclyn Hill palette, which I'm sure you guys have heard, talked about, seen, you know, the, the deal with this one. I actually taped the, the card with all the names on it. Um, this is a great palette. I have actually used this quite a bit. As you can see, there has been some usage on this. Um, this palette is amazing when it comes to blendability and the only thing I have an issue with is the shimmers you have to apply with a finger because with a brush similar to these ones they are not as pigmented so that's the only thing I have an issue with on this one. Um, here's the Morphe 35O palette. Um, so this is the, this is the standard 35O palette. It's got a mix of mattes and shimmers. I have used it from time to time. Again now this is a different uh, quality of of um, of eyeshadow because with this one I can use the shimmers with a brush and they're actually pretty decent like look at that they're actually pretty decent these are more softer shadows so I feel like that's probably why um, the 30 if I had to recommend a Morphe palette at all I would say go with the 35O because the shadows are way more easier to use. They're more butterier and the shimmers are more easier to apply. This is the 35O palette. It's a, it's a warm palette. Again, you guys know I'm a warm tone girl. Then I have the 35R palette. The 35R palette is gold. Um, again, I'm a warm tone girl. So this is the gold uh, palette. You have some shimmers. You have three rows of shimmers here and then you have um, all mattes in the, these four rows here. Uh, the gold palette, let me show you some swatches here. So the gold palette, again, also is very creamy and buttery. So it's easy to apply these shadows, which is a better quality than the Jaclyn Hill palette. It's a better quality than their smaller um, square palettes I was showing you. They are way more easier to apply. And I have to say, it, again, if I'm going to recommend a Morphe palette to you guys, it'll be the 35O or the 35R because their quality of shadow is a lot higher than what the Jaclyn Hill palette is for shimmers and their uh, square, their little square ones that I showed you earlier. 
Um, I just, I don't know what it is. The quality is different. You will, you could notice the difference. These are the best ones out of their line, in my opinion. Um, some people may not think that. So, I mean, so that's their thing, right? But that's my opinion for when it comes to Morphe shadows. I, I do believe that the 3501R are the best quality out of all of them. Um, now, what I want to show you guys, that was all my eyeshadow palettes, okay? Uh, I want to show you guys quickly some highlighting palettes that I have, and then I'll give you guys a quick rundown. So the first one I have is the 30, um, the 3D Highlight by Huda Beauty. This one is what it looks like. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have to clear my arm for swatching. Um, so this is what it looks like. You get, you get four quadrants, like four boxes. You got Fiji, which is, um a base like it's a cream base you have seychelle uh which is a powder a light powder tahiti and zanzibar <clears throat> honestly i i think these are pretty i don't think they're as when you swatch them they look pretty like you know intense but they're not as intense as when you apply them i feel like they're a little bit more softer so if you're looking for something that's a little bit more you know uh softer here is what the cream base looks like. The cr I don't know. I don't like the cream. I'm not a cream fan um, when it comes to... See how it gives like a shimmer? I don't know. I just don't... I don't like cream bases personally for me when it comes to highlighting. That's just my personal preference. But that's what... That's what those other three shimmers look like. They're very subtle when you apply it with a brush. So if you don't want like a banging highlight and you want something a little more on the subtle side, then this is definitely an option. I feel like the cream base is what amplifies it a little bit more. That's just my opinion. Um, do I like this? Yes, for one, I'm not looking for a banging highlight, but if you're looking for a blinding highlight, this is not it. Sorry, my memory on my camera here has run out, so I had to make some more space. Moving on. So my next um, highlight palette is the Becca and Chrissy Teigen uh, collaboration. I, um, I've never really been a huge, huge fan of Chrissy Teigen's, but I feel like she came out with a really nice highlighting palette with Becca and I've always loved Becca products. This is the Rose Gold by Becca. And then this is like a peachy, um, I don't know. I wanted this one more because of it's called beach nectar. So here's Rose Gold at the top. Beach nectar is right here and it comes with a, it comes with a blush and then it also comes with a bronzer, which is really pretty as well. Um, I love it. I really do. Would I travel with it? No, because Becca, Becca um, highlights are very, very soft. They will break. You could drop it on the floor next to you and it'll break. So I would not travel with it um, per se. Um, but I do love it. So if you guys have it in your collection, pull it out, use it. It's so pretty. Love it. Mainly, I use that more in the summertime because of the peachy-ish, pinkish things going on there. Um, okay, so now uh, all I have left are my Anastasia glow kits. The first one is my Nicole Guerrero glow, glow kit. Um, it came with the six, uh, what's it called? Six uh, different colors. Here, let me see if I can swatch these. So the first one is Kitty Cat. These were like out of this world. These are like blinding. Then I have Forever Young. Then I have Daydream which is more of like a peach. Then I have Forever Lit, which was like a more white, more white. Then I have Glow Getter, which is more of a gold, which is my favorite, because that's the dip. I've used Glow Getter more in this entire palette than anything. And then I have 143, which is more on the bronzier side. Like, look at this. Look at that. Freaking amazing. I cannot believe... This is one of my favorite highlighting palettes ever. Um, I, like, look. It is blinding. Blinding. Um, the Anastasia Nicole one is my favorite. I've never had an issue with this. It's definitely very blinding, but I really don't care. Um... I love it. If you guys have it, definitely pull it out. It doesn't have a mirror, which I'm okay with, only because it's less heavy. And, you know, potentially you could travel with this because they're a little bit more on the on the um, pressed side. So it's easier for you guys to travel with if you need to. 
Um, so that was that. Now I have three other glow kits from Anastasia. The first one is the Sun Dipped, which is my, I think it's my favorite if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is what the Sun Dipped looks like. Uh, you have Bronze, Summer, Tourmaline, and Moonstone. So I'm going to just, here's Bronzed. This is Summer. This is Tourmaline. I've used Tourmaline a lot in the fall time. Tourmaline. And then Moonstone. Again, they're banging. They are bang highlight type of product. Gorgeous. Cannot complain. Definitely can't complain. I have always loved Anastasia Glow Kits. They are the best bang for your buck. Each round pan is 7.4 grams each. Oh wait, no, I lied. Yeah, no, I didn't lie. It's 7.4 grams each tr each little pan. That's a lot of product. You guys will not need, you will need one palette for your entire life if that's the case. Then this is the That Glow. Uh, maybe this is the one that I love more. Oh yeah, no, this is the one that I love more. The That Glow. Um, here, let me see if I can. So this was the Sun Dipped. This will be, this is That Glow. So the first one is Sun Burst. Look at that. Golden Bronze. Uh, bubbly and dripping in gold in this one is my favorite one my lighting in here sucks guys so the shimmer you gotta I gotta work with the lighting in order to get show you the shimmer um, this one is my favorite I've used it so many times um, I don't tend to travel with the the glow kits only because like you know the less you bring the better so I, I tend to only bring like the single pan um, highlighters I own. Here's the last kit I have, and this is the sugar kit. Um, there's marshmallow, gumdrop, butterscotch, and starburst. So let's start with marshmallow. There's marshmallow. There's gumdrop. I'm going to put that one at the top here. Gumdrop has got like a two-toned effect. Like a little bit of a pink hue. Um, here's butterscotch. Butterscotch is at the bottom there. And then Starburst is more of a pinkier. Uh, it's got a pinky hue to it. And that's my last palette to show you guys. Um, the glow kits are amazing. Honestly, one will last you a lifetime. I'm just extra that way, so I have four. Um, I did have... I did have um, a, one of the holiday ones that they had, but I gave that away in one of my giveaways because I just, I won't be able to use all of these. So I ended up uh, passing one along to someone who can definitely enjoy it more than I, I could because I had too much stuff. Um, so yeah, that was it. That's my collection of palettes. Um, part two is now over and complete. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really don't do too many collection um videos because I just never thought that anybody would be interested so I'm trying I'm testing out that topic um, to see how well it does to see if you guys want to see more and then if you guys want to see more I can show you a collection of my liquid lipsticks and um, I can show you a collection of my skincare um, but uh, yeah let me know down below if you guys like these type of videos I don't even know I'm just trying it out to see um, but yeah, so if you have any questions or, um, you know, any updates in any way that, uh, a palette I may want to try, definitely leave them down below and, uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone. Mwah.